we are graphing an equation that's in slope intercept form, what is the first thing that we graph? So think back to your notes. I should see a lot more hands raised than just a couple of little meager this, okay? When we are plotting our graph, when we're plotting this equation onto our graph, how do we know what's the first thing to graph on here? Susanna? The y-intercept. And which one of these is the y-intercept? Uh, Samantha? The three. Is it a positive or a negative? Positive. And how do we know? Because it has a plus sign. Okay, so the sign, every little component about this equation tells you what you have to plot first, what directions you have to plot in. Are they positive or are they negative? So you have to utilize all of it. The first thing we're going to plot is the point zero, 0,3. Remember that y-intercept, this is your y-intercept, it is a point. It is a point when x is equal to 0, what is the value of y? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so that you guys can see it easier. The first thing that we're going to do is plot the point 0, 3. So looking at my graph, I start at the origin and I go up to the 3. That's the first point on my graph. After that, I then focus on the slope. So remember, the slope is the value that is the coefficient, the coefficient to the variable. It's attached to the variable. That is your slope. Your slope is, is like GPS, guys. It's giving you coordinate directions. Go right here, stay straight, go left, go up, go down. It's telling you a direction that you're going to move. So for here with the slope, the slope is a positive one over a positive two, which means that I'm either gonna go up one and then to the right two, or do they both have to be positive? No, they could both also be negative. A negative over a negative is also a positive, isn't it? Right? Negative times negative and negative divided by negative gives you a positive answer. So I could technically write it as a negative one over a negative two, which means I would go down one and then I would go to the left two. It's telling me directions and I can move in either direction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot as much as I can using my up and to the right. So I'm going to go up one to the right two. That's going to take me to the point two four. Then I'm going to go up one to the right two. That's going to take me to the point four five. Up one to the right two takes me to the point six six. Up one right two takes me to eight seven. And up one to the right two takes me to ten eight. I can't go any further because I don't have any more grid on that side, but I can go in the opposite direction, can't I? Instead of going up one to the right two, I could follow the down one and left two. Down one, left two is gonna take me to negative two, two. Down one, left two takes me to negative four, one. Down one to the left two takes me to negative six, zero. Down one to the left two takes me to negative eight, negative one. And down one to the left two takes me to negative 10, negative two. So I now have all of these points plotted. Now when I wanna connect, I have to have a straight edge, a ruler to be able to connect You want to make sure it goes through those points perfectly before you connect them. There's my line. Now, like I said before, you don't have to plot every single point 
you could just plot one point off to the right side of the y-axis and one point off to the left side of the y-axis. So you could do opposite directions for one point each for the slope and then connect them. But for the sake of today, I want you to plot as far as you can in both directions and then we'll be checking to see whether you got them correct. Okay, let's take a look at problem two. For problem two, we have y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. Okay, again, the y-intercept, the y-intercept in this place is a positive 5. The y-intercept is a positive 5. So when I plot it, I'm going to plot the point 0, 5. That's my y-intercept. So I look at my y-axis, and I go up to where the 5 is. Now this time, my slope happens to be a negative. So when I have a negative slope, that means one of the values is negative, while the other one is positive. So I could write it as negative 3 over a positive 1. If it's negative 3 over positive 1, that means I'm going to go down 3, and then I'm going to go to the right 1. Or I could do the reverse. I could make it a positive 3 on the top and then a negative 1 on the bottom. By doing that, I would wind up going up 3, but then I would go to the left 1. They both will take me along the line of the graph. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to go down 3 and then to the right 1. So if I go down 3 to the right 1, that's going to take me to the point 1, 2. Then I'm going to keep doing it again. Down 3 to the right 1 takes me to the point 2, negative 1. Down 3 to the right 1 takes me to the point 3, negative 4. Down 3 to the right 1 takes me to the point 4, negative 7. Down 3 to the right 1 takes me to the point 5, negative 10. Okay, so I can't go any further down, but I can still go up. I could go up 3 and then to the left 1. If I go up 3, left 1, that's going to take me to negative 1, positive 8. Up 3, left 1 will take me to negative 2, positive 11. And then that's all I can graph. So I connect them together. Are there any questions? Raise your hand if you need me to do another example. Everybody's okay? All right, so I'm gonna pause the video then, or pause the recording.